Welcome, welcome, welcome to the house of the Lord. Take your seat in God's presence, please. Hallelujah. Uh, before we get into the Word, just a couple of little things. just want to say thank you very much for all those that came and joined and stood with us yesterday morning in the CBD. Uh, we're trying to stop that Antichrist spirit of murder and violence from establishing a stronghold here in our region, and it's happening. So thank you very much for all those that um, turned up yesterday. It was good. The haka certainly, certainly does its trick perfectly. Um, just uh, um, who, who got water baptized? Could you, all those that got water baptized last Sunday, please stand up. We'd love to give you a, a clap this morning. Let's go, put our hands together for all those that got water baptized. Good on you. Congratulations. Awesome stuff. Don't be surprised if you had a, have had a bit of a hard week because uh, like the, uh, the, the uh, Old Testament, after they got water baptized, the enemy comes in and attacks. So uh, guard your heart, fight a good fight of faith and stand strong on his word. Keep on feeding on the word of God. Amen. Anybody led anybody to the Lord this week? Put your hand up if you led somebody to the Lord. Awesome stuff. Anybody else? Great stuff. Most probably Ruth. Uh, I think she's uh, Ruth's in the hospital. Uh, new baby being born. Yep, new baby being born this morning. It was supposed to be induced, I think, tomorrow. Was that right? But uh, came naturally today. Isn't that cool? It's not Ruth's baby. Ruth took the mum in to the hospital. But I'm sure Ruth's most probably led a whole bunch to the Lord during the week also. So we're looking at equip to heal this morning. So God's going to equip you to heal the sick this morning. So by the time you leave here this morning, you're going to be fully equipped. So I'm going to be fully equipped. Just some little horrible little statistics in our beautiful, clean, green nation of New Zealand. Type 2 diabetes has increased 70 to 90% 90 over the last 20 years. And New Zealand has now the second highest rate of cancer. And uh, in New Zealand, there's 165,000, just over 165,000 people with heart disease. And New Zealand does, does uh, die at a rate of something like 5,840 people from heart disease each year at the moment. And it's getting worse. Teen depression has doubled. Teen, de teen depression has doubled in 40 years. And I would say since... Uh, the lockdowns and the mandates, uh, that, that number would have uh, dramatically increased. Um, there's 70,000 people, uh, just over 70,000 people battling with uh, dementia in our country. And, uh, and, and by the year 2050, it'll be 170,000. 70,000 at the moment, but by 2050, it'll be 170,000. Our nation needs healers. Our nation needs God's sons and daughters that know what it is to be able to heal the sick, cast out demons, set the captives free. Amen? Mark chapter 16. Let's have a, um, a little bit of a look. Uh, Mark 16 and 17. Before we read that, Christ is the healer, but because you are filled with his spirit, you are now the healer. Amen? Christ is in heaven. Seated at the right hand of the Father, He has sent the Holy Spirit to fill us and to clothe us. And so that's, we are filled and clothed with the Spirit of Christ. And Christ is the healer, which means you are filled with the Spirit of Christ. You are now the healer. Give the person a high five beside you this morning. Say, you are the healer. If you're a Christian and in need of healing, you are actually the healer. So heal yourself. Heal yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit in and on your life. Heal yourself. Get yourself healed. And then go out and lay your hands on the sick. And I can just about um, guarantee the more sick people you lay hands on uh, the, the other six days of the week, the, your, the quicker your healing will happen. The more sick people you lay hands on and pray for healing, the quicker your healing will come. Amen? So if you're battling with illness, you start praying for others. Job got his breakthrough 
when he prayed for others. His breakthrough came automatically when he prayed for others. Amen? Hallelujah. So there you got some homework uh, already. Um, 16 verse 17 of Mark's gospel. And these signs will follow those who believe. Give me a wave this morning if you're a believer. God promises, it says, states categorically, without any doubt, these signs will follow you. If you're a believer, these signs are following you already. You might not have uh, released them. You might not be aware of them. You might be full of doubt and unbelief about them. But God says these signs follow you if you believe in me. Give me a wave this morning again if you believe in him. These signs are following you. Say, I've got signs following me. All you've got to do now is activate those things. Activate those things. Use those things. Bring those things into reality in your own life if you're battling with illness, but bring those things into reality in those people around about you. The sick people that you're going to come in contact with this week, you've got signs following you that you need to activate and release into their lives to bring healing. Do I hear an amen? These signs will follow those who believe in my name. In whose name? Not my name. Not Apostle Brian Tamaki's name. Jesus the Christ. Amen? In His name, in His name, we will cast out demons. And we have looked at, uh, looked at that over the last couple of weeks. We had a whole bunch of demons coming out last Sunday night. We had a Holy Ghost party because the uh, apostles preaching in Tauranga wasn't the clearest. And so we had a Holy Ghost party. So we had, we had a whole bunch of demons coming out of people's lives. Uh, uh, give me a wave if you had some demons cast out last Sunday night. Look at that whole bunch of hands going up. That's freedom. That's freedom right there. That's freedom. Hallelujah. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. That's the language of angels that God talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And verse 18, they will uh, take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. So if somebody tries to poison you, it's not going to work. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's the part of this verse that we want to just focus on here this morning. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Who will lay hands on the sick? Say, I will. Who's going to lay hands, who's going to lay hands on the sick this week? Awesome. You, God has anointed you and I, has empowered you and I to lay hands on the sick, to pray the prayer of faith, in Jesus' name, and release the healing into their lives. It says, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It doesn't say they may recover. It doesn't say they could recover. It says they will recover. Now, and, I, and, and, I, and I had a sense that we were going to have a lot of people in their minds thinking, but, or, you know, but I've, I've prayed that and and they didn't get better. And so you've given up. God wants you to repent of giving up. God wants you to repent of unbelief. God wants you to repent of doubt. Shake those things off and continue. Say continue. Turn to the person beside you this morning. Give them a high five and say continue in the prayer of faith. God says in his word it is a fight of faith. It's a fight of faith. So you've got to battle. You've got to battle your own doubt and unbelief. You've got to battle your fears. You've got to battle the person's fears and unbelief and, and, and doubt. Amen? You've got to battle the demons of hell. You've got to battle ancestral curses and familiar spirits. But I, I trust you're a fighter. You're not somebody who gives up easily. As I've said, the evangelists, the Kiwi evangelist Trevor Yaxley prayed for a thousand people before he saw one get healed. And it was a short time after that he was starting to raise the dead. Amen? So don't give up. Turn to the person beside you and say, don't give up. Turn to the person on the other side of you and say, keep on keeping on. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. What if it doesn't work? That's what pops into people's minds. The enemy, see, when we read the Scriptures, 
The enemy can whisper in our minds the contrary or the opposite. And, and don't listen to that stuff. We, we, you've got a sick person right in front of you, and you think, that's right, Pastor Martin said, I can lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And then all the what-ifs and the buts. Keep your butts in your pants. And rebuke the what-ifs. Amen? Keep your butts in your pants and get rid of the what-ifs. Stop listening to the enemy of your soul. Stop allowing yourself to be tripped up in your faith. Smash the enemy back. Amen? That's what he's trying to do with you. You've got the opportunity. Here's a sick person in front of you, and you'll remember this word, and now you've got a choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to step forward in the step of faith, or are you going to back step in the step of unbelief and doubt, in the step of fear? What if? Say, speak to you. The enemy says, what if it doesn't work? You speak back to them and say, what if it does? What if it does? What if it does? Then quote the word of God. My God said, I will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So all, all my job is just to lay hands on them, pray the prayer of faith, let the Holy Spirit have his way. Let the Holy Spirit do his thing. I can't climb inside that person's skin and heal their body, but the Spirit of God can flow through me into their body and heal them. Amen? So it's actually not you and I that actually are the healers. It's the Holy Spirit through us. But He needs vessels. He needs conduits of His power and glory. Amen? So He needs you and I to step out, the step of faith, and to lay hands on the sick, and he will flow and pray the prayer of faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Boom. Amen. Hallelujah. So you pray it with faith. When you're praying with faith, you're seeing in your God-given imagination, you're seeing the results of what you're asking him. Don't look and don't focus on the illness. See the results. While you're praying for them, see the results. See the Spirit of God flowing. Imagine, use your imagination. It's God-given imagination. And, 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 and you need your God-given imagination when you're walking the walk of faith. So as you're praying in your imagination, see the electricity of God's power flowing through your arms and out of your hands and fingertips and into their body and attacking that illness and destroying that illness and restoring their body back to full health. Amen. That's how you do it. That's as simple as it is. But let's have a look at some other verses um, just to help you along your way. Amen. Um. Actually, let's. If you've got an illness right now, I just want to. I want. We want to get rid of that illness right now. So, if you've got an illness, I want you to lay hands on that part of the body uh, that you've got an illness in right now. If you want, if you want to receive healing, uh, lay hands on that part of your body you've got illness. Father God, we release the power of your mighty Holy Spirit right now. We bind and break and rebuke the power of the enemy from this part of their body. We rebuke the enemy from their body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your hold, break your influence. Go in the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name. And we speak healing, be healed and made perfectly whole in Jesus' wonderful name. Jesus' wonderful name, the power of your Holy Spirit right now, ministering in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So it's not by feelings, it's by, so forget your feelings. You just keep on thanking God for the healing. Let's move on. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 16. When, the, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. Notice he cast out the demons first, then he healed. Many illnesses are, uh, are demon and demon, demonic in origin. And, uh, and, and so you can be praying the prayer of faith for healing, and nothing's happening. So deal with the demon. If a person is not getting healed, or they don't feel, or they don't... Um, they don't feel any better. They get they, the pain's still there or whatever. You bind or rebuke that demon. Amen. It might be just a small little thing in the spirit realm, not very big at all. But rebuke that thing. 
bind and break its power and its influence and command it to go from their bodies and then speak healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus cast out the spirits with a word and then healed all who were sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen? Say, he took all my sicknesses. Bore all our diseases. Thank you, Lord. He took it all, just like, just exactly the same as he took our sin. He's taken all our sicknesses, all our diseases, every sort of ailment. He's taken all our injuries. He's taken it all. He's made provision for our sin through the shed blood of Christ. And he's made provision for our healing through the broken, his broken body. Amen. Hallelujah. Demons must be cast out before you can heal the sick. Uh, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus said to us, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed on heaven or in heaven. So binding and loosing, and the word loosing means breaking. It's breaking the influence off because uh, when people have demons, those demons don't want to go willingly. They want to remain. They're having fun where they are. Um, they're quite comfortable and they don't want to be made uncomfortable. When we cast them out, they, they flee, and, and they roam through dry places in the spirit realm, and they need to influence and get inside somebody's body because uh, that's where they feel comfortable. When they're roaming through dry places, it's not a good spot to be. Hello? So they're wanting to get into people's bodies. They can't get into people's bodies easily. They must have the person's cooperation. And often through ignorance, people cooperate with the demons. But we are not ignorant. We're not ignorant. We can cast those things out in Jesus' name. Amen? And then we can bring healing. So bind it. It's like tying it up and then breaking its influence and commanding it to come out and get off in Jesus' name. Amen? Boom. Then pray the prayer of healing. You've got to use the keys. Turn to the person beside you this morning, give them a high five and say, use the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Just a couple of little um, examples in Scripture here. The woman with the issue of blood. Remember, she had uh, suffered many years and she'd spent all her money on doctors, but her, her condition just got worse. But she thought to herself, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. So she saw in her mind's eye a God-given imagination, her, her laying hold of Jesus, the hem of his garment, and she saw her condition healed, and she saw herself completely free. And so Jesus was just going for a stroll one day, and she did it. She came up behind him, grabbed the hem of his garment, and boom, there was a transference of power, so much so that he stopped in his tracks and he said, someone's touched me. And they said, are you mad? There are thousands of people touching it. And he said, oh, no, no, this, this, someone's touched me the, differently. Someone has touched me with a touch of faith because I have felt power, power of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting, though, that Jesus did not heal one person until the Holy Spirit had come upon him. From that day forward, he went forward doing miracles. He was already, he was born the son of God, but he did not heal anybody, did not cast out any demons right up until after the time he had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. He limited himself to become like you and I so that you and I could become exactly as he is. Amen? A resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And so, um, so power of the Holy Spirit went out of his body and into her. In Acts chapter uh, 3 and verse 6, if you're taking down notes, um, that's uh, the story of the apostles and the, the lame guy at the temple gate. He says, what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. And boom, the lame guy got up and walked. So here it was in the name of Jesus Christ. Boom. And he got up and he walked. In Jesus' name, walk. That's what he commanded him. So there's power, the power of the Holy Spirit, but there's power in the name of Jesus Christ as well. And we need to know both. And, um, and in Mark chapter 8 and verse 8 to 9, it says, Just say the word, the centurion said, and my servant will be healed. 
So Jesus just needed to speak the word or say the word, be healed. And he knew that his servant was going to be healed. And Jesus then turned around to him and said, I haven't found such great faith in all my churches and all my Christian folk and all my believers. I haven't found such great faith in amongst my people than you have. You just say, speak the word. And, and then the centurion gave us the key. He said, I see that you are a man under authority just like I am. I say to one of my soldiers, come here, and he comes. I say to another soldier, go, and he goes, because I'm a man under authority. And I see, Jesus, you're a man under authority also. And, and that, was the, that was the great key of why he had such great faith. He recognized spiritual authority, and he, he knew how to flow with it. Amen? And you and I, we need to know uh, spiritual th- authority and how to flow well with spiritual authority. Do I hear an amen? So, um, so, so Centurion said that, just say the word and, and my servant will be healed. There's, there's power in the word. There's power in the Holy Spirit and there's power in the name of Jesus Christ, but also there's power in the word. Hallelujah. You can use scripture. Speak with the Word of God sometimes. The Holy Spirit will lay upon your heart a verse when, you're, when you've, uh, you've, you've approached somebody to pray for them. Or it might be your own health you're praying for. Uh, God some, sometimes can lay a, a verse upon your heart to pray for them. Um, when, when I was in India, a little seven-year-old boy, a mother brought his, her little seven-year-old boy up for prayer, and he was both deaf and mute which means he couldn't speak at all. He couldn't hear and he couldn't speak. And so as I, because we, we didn't have long, so I didn't, I just, I just, as I moved towards him, the verse came to me where Jesus stuck his fingers in, in the person's ear in Scripture and, and commanded his ears to be opened. And so I, I, I stuck my fingers in the little seven-year-old boy's ears and I commanded his ears to be opened in Jesus' name. And bang! His little face lit up like a light bulb. First time that he'd ever heard anything in seven years of his life. And then I prayed for his, his, uh, the healing of his um, tongue. And he began to say mummy, mummy in Telugu, the language. So, um, so there's power in the, in, the, in, the, in the Holy Spirit. There's power in the Word of God. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, just have a look at the, the power of the Holy Spirit a little bit um, further. It says that in Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, Jesus says, uh, He called all His 12 disciples together and gave them power. That's dunamis, where we get the word dynamite. So that's the power. It's, it's tangible. It's real. It's, it's, it's more powerful than uh, hydrogen, atomic bombs, or any other nuclear weaponry. The power of God is way more powerful God spoke, and, and His power created the universes. Boom. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit. He gave them dunamis. He gave them power and authority, which is exousia. It's the right to use the power. Exousia is the right, the authority to use the power. Because you use it for God's glory and for people's good. Not to get your name in lights. Not to build your ministry. Build the house of the Lord and bless people's lives to see them set free. God loves to set people free from suffering. Did you hear me? God loves to set people from suffering. And, uh, and those who God has healed in this church, you all know what I'm talking about. You are suffering, but now you're not. Why? Because you prayed the prayer of faith or somebody prayed the prayer of faith over you, and now you're healed and you're free from your suffering. God loves to set us free from suffering. God does not take any joy. God does not get any glory from people suffering. If you think God gets glory from people suffering, you've got a religious demon. Now I bind and rebuke it off your life in Jesus' name. Amen. He give us power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Notice the order once again. Power over demons. The second one to cure diseases. So deal with the demonic. Stop ignoring it like it doesn't exist. Don't be frightened of it. Just get familiar with it, but get excellent and precise 
in dealing with it. Amen? Most of your problems would be solved. Most of your family problems would be solved. Most of your health issues would be solved. Most of your struggles with finance, most of your addictions would be solved if you would only stop ignoring the demonic realm and deal with it. Deal with those demons in Jesus' name. Amen? I tell you what, I've saved myself a lot of suffering. I've saved my family a lot of suffering. I've saved thousands of people in this region of Nelson and, and in different, region, uh, different um, towns I've been to and, and other countries I've been to. Thousands of people uh, have been set free from suffering, and God has helped them because I, I know what it is to deal with the demonic. Amen? So s- stop turning a blind eye to it and, and open your eyes to it. Read the Scriptures. Do a, do a study on what God says about the demonic. Because a lot of stupid Christians, religious, religious Christians, think that they don't have to deal with the demonic because Jesus dealt with them on the cross. Jesus dealt with the legal right that de- the devil and demons had over people's lives. That was sin. So he dealt with the sin factor, which was the legal right that the devil and demons, the demons of hell had and used to get influence into people's lives. That's what he broke. The power of sin through his shed blood. Amen? Now they have no right. Now they've got no authority over me. I'm under the blood of Christ, and they cannot touch me unless I, in my foolishness, I sin. Or in my carnality, I sin. Then I open the door to them. Then I give them permission and authority. I've got the calling card on the inside of me. It's called sin. It might be through pornography. It might through be through all sorts of sinful acts. You just got to get under the blood of Jesus Christ. Keep short accounts with God. Amen. Then the demons of hell have got no right and no authority to attack you. They cannot influence your health and they cannot influence your mind and they cannot influence your life. But you and now and I have been given all power and all authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Now we are in the position of authority. Now we are in the position of power. Now we can deal with those things. And that's God. God has anointed you and I to know how to deal with them. God has anointed you and I to deal with them. You can cast out demons. You might have a family member that battles with epilepsy or autism. Bind and rebuke those demons. You might have a, a, a family member that battles with ADHD, a, a, a family member that, that uh, has reoccurring nightmares all the time. Get those demons out. Get those demons off. Amen. Prayed for a little leper lady, and I've shared the story before, and, 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 and the, the, the one side of her body will get healed, and the, but the other side didn't. And then I would just use that verse that was in the Bible, you know, be cleansed. I'd speak that word, be cleansed. And then the other side would come right, but the side that was right before was now not right. And then I realized it was a demon spirit that was jumping from one side of her body to the other. And I bound and I rebuked it in Jesus' name, and bang, her whole body was completely healed from leprosy. That doesn't mean much to us, but if you've got leprosy in, in some of these nations, you are not allowed to mix with your family members. You're not allowed to, to go out into society. You are you are um, prisoner to, uh, to the leper colonies, so you don't spread leprosy. So when a person gets healed, woo, their whole life is restored. They can go back to their family members. She was a very happy lady, but I had to deal with that dem- that demon spirit, and and. Many of us that are battling issues and having major struggles in life because we are ignoring the demonic. And you need to deal with the demonic. And you might need to deal with it more than just once, particularly, particularly if it's generational. You, the same struggles that you're battling with now, your parents struggled. Your, your brothers and sisters struggled. Your kids are still struggling with that same stuff. In fact, their struggle is going to be worse than yours because what walks in the parents runs in the kids. Hello. So your grandparents battled it. Your uncles and aunties battled it. It's a demon. It's a familiar spirit. Bind and break it. And, and so you're going to have to deal with that thing regularly and, and like daily. 
weekly, monthly, yearly, and keep on keeping on. Bind and break and rebuke the power of that familiar spirit of cancer, that familiar spirit of divorce, that whatever, that familiar spirit of addiction, that familiar spirit of alcoholism, whatever, the familiar spirit of violence, the familiar spirit of whatever it is. Bind and break and rebuke its power off your life, off your family, in Jesus' name. Every day, every week, every month, every year. Those things you cannot just pray a little Kiwi prayer and expect to be all ho. It's all, no. In my prayer time this morning, I was dealing with my unfamiliar spirits. Once again, just addressing those demons. Off my family. Get out and be gone. Stop ignoring these things. If you want freedom, this is one of the great paths to freedom. Amen. You've got to deal with the demonic. Amen. It means you've got to be wide awake to it. You've got to know what it is. And you've got to deal to it. You can't expect pastor or the elders or the man up leaders, the legacy leaders to keep on dealing with it for you. You've got to start to go toe to toe with some of the stuff. You've got to get man, you've got to become man enough. You've got to become woman enough. You've got to become a son and a daughter of God enough to and, and take your rightful position with all the power and authority that He's given you and I and start stepping out on it, start standing in it, start releasing it, start speaking it, start believing it, and get free. Get all those around you free. Amen. It's a battle. It's a battle. Remember, Trevi actually prayed for a thousand people. And not one of them got healed. But he did not give up. Stop giving up. Say, I'm not going to give up anymore, Pastor. Say, I'm going to rise to the occasion, Pastor. In the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to release the power. And the sick are going to get healed. And demons are going to get cast out. In Jesus' name. That's it. Perfect. Beautiful. Jesus said this in, um, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So we're born again. The Holy Spirit comes in us. We're born again. We become a Christian. But then the Holy Spirit wants to come upon us in power. Remember, Jesus was born the Son of God, but he didn't heal the sick. He didn't cast out demons until after the Holy Spirit had come upon him. After he was water baptized, it says the Holy Spirit came upon him. God says in his word in, Mark, in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power. Dunamis. Boom. Hallelujah. I trust you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you speak in the other languages. You speak in the language of angels. There were a whole bunch of people released last Sunday night in the language of angels. I trust you. You keep on stirring that gift up and God will add to it. Just keep on. Remember, when a baby starts to talk, it talks in a couple of syllables. But the more the baby speaks those syllables, before it, it starts to, before long it starts to form words. And those, they keep, the baby keeps on speaking those words. It might be mama, dada. Whatever. But the, the more the bubby speaks those words before long, it, it adds and it becomes sentences. And then those sentences become whole paragraphs, conversations. Amen? So I trust those that were baptized in the Holy Spirit last Sunday, I, pr I trust you've been stirring that up. I, the enemy says, oh, that's just you. You're just putting that on. Or the enemy might even go one step further and say, oh, that's, just, that's demonic. That's not a good that's not a out of language, that's not a language of angels, that's a language of demons. You need to stop that right away. You tell them to go get stuffed. You stir that gift up. Their language of angels. My mind is unfruitful. I don't know what I'm saying, but I tell you what, the demons of hell know exactly what I'm saying. So when I speak with authoritative tongues, the demons of hell flee. Spiritual witchcraft, spirits of witchcraft, just they just crumble. They back off. Amen. 
You need to pray at least half an hour, minimum of half an hour in tongues, the language of angels, every day if you want to be used by God. If you want to be used by God, you've got to pray a minimum of in tongues, half an hour, preferably up towards an hour. If you haven't been released in the language of angels, you can join the prayer line this morning and come up the front and get, get released in that power and get released in the, in the, in, in the uh, language of angels. And it says, though they, they who speak in tongues edify themselves or charge themselves up. Amen. Sometimes when I'm making a, a solo trip to Christchurch or something like that, I'll speak most of the, most of the way. I'll, I'll have a bottle of water to keep the old throat lubricated. But most of the way to Christchurch, I'll pray in tongues. By the time I am get there, I'm just arcing with power. You give me some sick people to heal, and I'm going to heal them quick. You give me some demonic people, I'm going to cast some demons out of people. Amen. You and I, we've got to keep filled with the power. Got to keep filled with the presence. Presence of God. Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the language of angels. Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The power of the name of Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 8 and verse 6. And the multitudes with one accord, heeding the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, which you're going to do also. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. Don't get all caught up with our possessed, oppressed, depressed. It's just influence is the best word. Just get, that, get, the, get those demons out and off people's lives, out from the influence of those demons. Amen? And many were, who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Many. Speak his name with authority in Jesus' name. Amen? James chapter 5 and verse 14, no need to turn there, for, but it's, it's that verse says, if anyone is sick among you, let him call the elders, and they will come, and the, the, they will pray the prayer of faith. They will anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith in Jesus' name, and you will be healed. Amen? So, so when, you're, when you're sick, don't, don't languish at home feeling sorry for yourself and, and, and have a pity party that nobody has come to hit, pray for you. Nobody knows that you're sick. They think you're gone to work. They don't know your situation. They've got busy lives. So you need to call them. It says, though they that are sick, let them call the elders. And, and don't just go for the elders straight away or for the pastor. You call your man up leader or your legacy leader, your boys to men, diamonds leader, your youth nation leader. You pray that you, you call those first. And if, you still, and if you don't get a breakthrough, then go the next tier of leaders. Amen? Don't worry out those that are in, in the elders. The, the, the man up leaders, legacy leaders, etc., they've got the goods also. They can pray the prayer of faith. They can anoint you with oil. Amen? Hallelujah. So um, call those ones and get them released in it. Power of spoken word, Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. It says that Paul came across the lame person and just said to them, he said, stand up. Didn't even say in Jesus' name. He just said, stand up. Didn't lay hands on him. Then anoint him with oil, just said, stand up. And the lame guy stood up, completely healed. Woo! In Acts chapter 3, the one we, we um, mentioned before, what I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. So there, there's a different prayers for the same condition, but they work because there's different levels of faith. And you and I, we've got to know the levels of faith that you're operating in. You've got to have a... a um, an estimation of the level of faith that the person you're praying for. So, so um, it says that, um, where well, I've got it written down here, it says, anoint them with oil. Other, one, other times it says, lay hands on them. Other times it says, just speak the name of Jesus. And other, word, other times it says, just speak the word. So the, the, the centurion said, just speak the word. And Jesus said, you've got great faith. Then for others, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Still got faith, but not as great as the first one. Just speak the word. Jesus said, I haven't heard anybody, I haven't seen anybody with faith like you've got. Just say, you just say, speak the word, and you know it's, it's done. You've got great faith. There's nobody else I've met with such a level of faith as the centurion. 
That's what Jesus said. The next one in Jesus' name. So that, that's still faith, but it's not as, not as great as the first one. But it's still good. It's still, it's still good faith. But then um, the next one is lay hands on them. And that person's still got faith, but not as great as the one that you can speak the name of Jesus over. Or the one just say the word, don't even go to the person. You might be on the other side of the world. You can just speak the word. And boom, it's done. So that has got great level. Then the, the name of Jesus is not so great. But then the laying hands on the sick, not so great as the, the previous two. Then it says um, um, oil. Call the elders and, and they will anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith. And so the level of faith is determines the level of contact. The, um, the person in the congregation who knows they're sick and has got to call the elders, it's because they're not strong enough, they're not healthy enough, they're weakened, so they can't go to the elders to get prayer. They've got to call the elders to them. They're bedridden. Hello? And so when, when you're bedridden and you can't get out of bed, it, it sometimes can really knock your faith. And um, you're battling with this illness, and so it's, it's hard sometimes when you're in that condition to have faith. And so the elders come to them and anoint them with oil. There's greater contact with oil. Oil goes on and remains on. Laying on of hands goes on for an instant and then off again. Speak in the name of Jesus, there's no contact. Speak the word, there's even less. So the, the, more, the, the less faith the greater the contact that we must have, okay? That's why, that's why we have oil. That's why we have oil, and we use oil for a lot of our prayer lines in the church because people's lack of faith. Don't be condemned by it. God says in his word that he has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. So you can go to third world nations, and because they're poor in this world, we think, some of you guys and girls are on benefits and you think you're poor. You're not poor. You're on a benefit. You're extremely rich when you go to poor countries. Where I've been to India and, and people are begging. There's, there's nothing for them. There's no, I've been to countries, there's no benefit. I've been to countries that are just fresh out of war. There's, there's, there's nothing for them. I've, I've seen a person that's been operated on with no morphine. And so soon after, a few hours after they'd been operated on, it was their stomach that had been operated on with no morphine. They had to be cut open with no morphine, otherwise they were going to die. They had to be operated on with no morphine. And so when I visited them a few hours afterwards, still no morphine, they were bracing against the bed end um, with the pain. But I laid hands on them, commanded the pain to go, commanded their bodies to be healed, and within 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, boom, all pain gone, healed in Jesus' name. Amen? Did that in Croatia in the war. Uh, um, soon after the war in Croatia, and I did that also in India when a, a pastor had been beaten up by the Hindu radicals and, uh, but couldn't afford the morphine. And so prayed the prayer of faith, boom, pain gone, completely healed. Amen? So the less faith a person has, the greater contact. And so, so, like, I don't need to take oil to India to pray for the sick. Sometimes, I think Joe, Jody, Elder Joe, um, a young, young person had a withered up, bent up arm and uh, came, came forward to be healed. And, and Jody, I think you said, stretch out your arm or something, something along those lines. You don't even say Jesus, just bang, 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 bang. bang. Crack, 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 went the bones, and his hand was just straightened. Arms straightened out, and fingers straightened out, and hands straightened out. See, in India and places like that, they're rich in faith. The poor of this world are rich in faith. That's what God says in his word. But the, the, that's the positive. You flick, that on the, you flick that on the other side, the negative. Those that are rich in this world are weak in faith. And that's why in New Zealand we struggle with faith. We struggle moving in faith, but you can, you can, if you, if you work at it, you will grow in faith. And it's not just New Zealand; that's the Western world. The Western world are very, very wealthy, and because of that, 
most believers struggle in faith. Um, but you don't need to. It's not, it's, it's not a thing to be condemned by. It's a challenge to rise to. It's, an, it's a humble admission, yeah. Like that, 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 that father that said to Jesus, I do believe, but help me, Lord, to overcome my unbelief. That's a good prayer to pray. That's a good, humble appreciation of who I am and how I am. I've got faith, but I still battle with unbelief and doubt. Um, even, even today, when people come up, the enemy might say to me sometimes, not every time, but sometimes the enemy say to me, you haven't got the goods. You can't heal that person. Shut up, you filthy demon. I bind you and I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm going to confidently lay hands on this person and I'm going to release the power of the Holy Spirit on them and I'm going to speak their healing or whatever it is in Jesus' name and I'm going to let God do the rest. Now that person that's just been prayed for needs to stay in an attitude of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord God, for your, the power of your Holy Spirit has gone into me and is healing me in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for full health. Thank you, Lord, for full healing. Thank you, Lord God, for setting me free. Stay in that See, most believers in New Zealand, they go away, go, I don't feel any better. And they will speak it out. Nothing's happened. I don't feel any better. Don't do that. Don't curse your healing by speaking out a curse like that. You stay in faith. It says that Abraham grew strong in faith, giving praise to God. And so as we praise God, we get strong in faith and we keep strong in faith. Amen. What are you praising God about? You're praising God, the answer to, your, to that prayer. Thank you, Lord God, I've been prayed for. I praise you, Lord God, for fully healing me, fully setting me free. I praise you every day. I praise you for fully healing me. And, and your, your healing will increase and increase. Don't curse your healing with unbelief, a confession of unbelief and doubt. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So um, the, the less faith, the greater the contact that is needed. So... Um, when, when you're getting prayed for or when you're doing the praying, you make sure that you relax. Get rid of your fears. Get rid of your doubts and unbelief. You can quietly repent of those things. God, I'm sorry for the fear of rejection, the fear of man, the fear of being laughed at, the fear of making a mistake. I resist those things in Jesus' name. Lord, I bind and rebuke my unbelief and doubt. Forgive me for having those things in Jesus' name. Boom. Now you're ready. Now you're ready. You got rid of the negative. Now you got the positive left. Now I'm going to be confident and lay hands on this person confidently, and the power of the Holy Spirit is going to go through, going to move through me and into them and heal them as I pray the prayer of faith in Jesus' name with authority. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, so you make sure you're relaxed, and the person who's getting prayed for, make sure they relaxed also. And um, we had a healing evangelist from Australia a couple of years ago. What was his name? Fresh my memory. John Miller. Thank you. And, um, and, and, and he got some of our guys and girls up to, to pray for. And um, in, in this church, what we've made the mistake of doing is, or saying, that when people come up for prayer, I often say, I'll raise your hands to the Lord. And so people do. They, so when they're going to get prayed for, they raise their hands to the Lord. John Miller says, please don't do that. Don't raise your hands to the Lord when I'm going to pray for you. It's It's... It's uh, the stance of religion. So we will, we will raise their hands to the Lord, but you don't see anywhere in Bible. In the New Testament, Jesus or the apostles praying for people, and before they get prayed for, they all raise their hands to the Lord. No, they didn't. They just received like a little child. And, and, and when you're praying for Christians, you'll hear them, and they'll just yabber away. Oh, they'll be, stop it. Stop it. Or they, they're, they're, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I mean, that's good, but you don't even need to do that. Just like a child. It's, healing is a children's bread. So when you get prayed for, just receive. Don't get into your religious stance of raising hands or praying in tongues or whatever. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Don't need to do that. Just remain like a little child and just receive. God wants to heal you more than what you want to be healed. So just relax. Get rid of the hype, religious hype. I've got to earn it by raising my hands. I've got to earn it by praying. No, no, no. Don't. You don't need to be spiritual enough to receive. You've just got to be humble enough and, and simple enough to receive. Our 
We get it so complicated, and our complication can block out what God's trying to do in our lives. So don't raise your hands to the Lord. Don't, don't get into your spiritual stance and yabber away in tongues or that. Shut up. Just relax. Let God do what He wants to do. He wants to heal you. He bled, suffered, and died to heal you. His body was whipped so your body could be healed. Just receive. Simply receive. Is that cool? So, um, yeah, just, and just make sure, if you're the prayer, make sure you don't let the devil mess with, you, mess with your head, like I said before, like he tries to mess with everybody's head with unbelief and self, self-doubt. Take your thoughts into captivity, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God under your breath. You can do that while you start to pray for that person. Amen. Um, can we all be upstanding? So we're going to have an opportunity right here, and uh, people are going to get healed. Um, now, I could give an altar call right now and, and uh, of people that are sick, and you're going to come forward, and I can guarantee about a third to half the people that come forward will get healed. But I'm not going to do that because we want more people to be healed. So what we're going to do is you are going to pray for the people around you that are battling with illness right now, and I can guarantee there will be 60 to 80% of people that get prayed for will get healed. So in a prayer line coming forward, about 30% to 50%, but you praying for them in the congregation, 60 to 80% of people that get prayed for this morning, I can guarantee will, we get, will get healed. Amen? So um, right now, I, I'm just going to re- read out a whole bunch of, um, if you've got uh, any viruses, it could be, as big as a COVID virus, but that's not really big. It's more like a f- bad cold. But you might have vir- you might have a COVID virus. We're not bothered by it. It's just a little cold. Um, but it might be something as small as a wart virus. Now you've got you've got warts on your body. It's a virus. We can we can break that off. In Jesus' name it might be an infection. We command those infections to go, whether it be sickness, injury, disease, cancers, but any of those sort of conditions. I want you to raise your hand up, right? We're, if you want to be healed from that, we're not going to force you to be healed. If you love your sickness that much, you can keep it. But if you want healing, doesn't matter how big or how small your illness, sickness is, if you want to be free and healed from that, quickly put your hand up, right? We are. Put it up, put it up tall. Don't go, don't go. It's sort of like, we're not really sure. Quite like it. It's quite nice. No, it's not. It's from the pit of hell. Get free from it. Put your hand right up and keep your hand right up. What, what, see, have a look around, people, please, quickly. Have a look at all those people who've got their hands up. I want, I want people around them to quickly gather around them. Uh, and I, don't, when, when people ask you what, you're, what you need prayer for, don't get into a big, long discussion about your illness. Just keep, we're not interested about the history of it. Just say, I've got, I've got this disease or th- that sickness, and let them lay hands on you. You stay relaxed. Get them to make sure they're relaxed and let them pray the prayer of faith. Quickly, keep your hand right up, up high, up high if you need prayer for. There are people starting to pray already. That's awesome. That's the way. The power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Got any illness you want to be healed from? You might have tooth decay. You might have problems with your teeth. You might have problems with your eyesight. You might have problems with your hearing. You know, you might have problems with dandruff or cirrhosis on your scalp and all sorts of other skin. It might be pimples, whatever it is. Put your hand up if you need prayer. You've still got illnesses. God's healing people right now. God's healing people right now. Receive by faith. Receive by faith. Quickly, if, you're not, if, you, haven't, if, you're not, if you haven't got an illness that you want prayer for, you shouldn't be standing there not praying for somebody. If you haven't got an illness and you don't need prayer for, you should be laying hands on somebody and praying for them the prayer of faith. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, God, for your healing power right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you haven't been prayed for but you want prayer, quickly put your hand up high. Put your hand up high if you need prayer for. Put your hand up and keep it up. Keep, put your hand up and keep it up if you need prayer. Quickly, quickly, put your hand up high if you need prayer and you haven't had prayer. There's, there's someone over here. Quickly, quickly, this person over here. Anybody else, put your hand up high if you haven't been prayed for but you need healing. 
Jesus' name. It's much quicker doing this, everybody praying for one another, rather than just a few chosen frozen up the front here, praying for everybody. God wants all believers. If you're a believer, you can cast out demons and you can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Jesus' name. They will recover means it, the recover speaks of, speaks of a process, not an instantaneous miracle. So most, most illnesses are healed within three or four days of people being prayed for. Can you remember that? People are prayed for within three or four days. Most people are, are healed over that period of time. They will recover talks about a period of time or a process. So people are getting prayed for, and you may have been prayed for this morning. The power of the Holy Spirit has gone into you. The power of the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. You can be, you can be healed instantly, but most people are healed over three or four days. By three or four days, you'll be completely better. What I want you to do, if you, if you've got, if you, if you feel totally better now, I want you to put your hand up and say, that's me. There's, hands, there's two hands there, there's... Another couple, there's a couple, couple of hands over here. You feel totally better right now. A couple of hands over here. So another one down the back there. Some people are healed. They feel completely better already. But you might not, but it doesn't mean that you're not being healed. But I can guarantee within three or four days, you will feel a whole lot better. What I want you to do is I want you to go on Facebook and I want you to post up or go on TikTok, whatever, social media. I want you to testify. Amen. I want you to testify on social media about what God has done in your body right now. Oh, I couldn't do that. People will laugh at me. Oh, they laugh at you already. That's the truth. Um, don't, don't be scared to, to testify. But if you, te if you share your story of what God has done for you, you'll, your story will impart faith into other people's hearts that are in the world and in darkness that need healing. And they might have a terminal cancer and they've only got been given three months to live and they've got, they've got young children and they don't want to leave their children to suffer without them. They need your testimony. They need to hear your story of what God, you might have been healed from warts, but your testimony is big enough and strong enough because God has healed you from warts. They think, well, if God can heal that person from warts, surely he can heal my cancer. Yes, he can. And, and your, your testimony of how you've been healed can impart faith into them to, for them to receive their healing. And they can be healed completely from cancer. Amen? And you can save somebody from dying. So get up on social media and post about how God has healed you. Amen? Amen. Holy Ghost. So that's enough from me. There's hot drinks, hot food, and hot fellowship. Awesome stuff. Hey, let's give the Lord a clap offering for all those people that have been prayed for, all those people that have been healed already, and all those people that are going to be healed over the next few days. Hot drinks and hot food. We've got the, uh, the child-free cafe upstairs. Got the kiddies cafe and the kids church and got the main cafe in there. God bless you all. See you back here tonight, 6 p.m. to hear the word of the Lord by our apostle. God bless you. Go with Christ. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Cast out those demons. Thank you.